those of you who guessed I was having a shit, you're correct. Um, yeah, that, I mean, it wasn't meant to take that long, but things happened and it did. Sorry about that. Sorry I'm five minutes late. But it is a British train route tonight, so five minutes. Nothing. Nothing whatsoever. So, yeah, um, been delayed enough by my arse clag. Let's get training. Warning. Sweary Train Simulator will include the swears. There are many also scenes of Michael Portello nature, which some viewers may find upsetting. Please be assured, any bad language is down to really being just excited about trains and it's not intended to offend so let's just enjoy some trains come on Okay, so where are we and what are we doing today? You can see a class 37 just sitting in the background there. And here's where we're going from Inverness over on the right hand side of the map there to Kyle of Lacalche over on the left hand side of the map in the bottom left corner there around all the, the wiggly bits around down the valleys and from Inverness. So get rid of that map good morning driver in a moment you receive the ra that's right away and your journey to the sky peninsula will begin our first stop this morning will be muir of ord probably how it's how it's said or spelt uh let's just turn down the clagging a little bit so i can hear myself think as usual these diesel locomotives are a little bit on the loud side well there's windows like it's error sound for no fucking reason whatsoever. Yup. Large logo, British Rail, Highland, Class 37, Mark 1 coaches. Yep. We're going all the way across. The Class 37s used to, um, used to run this route before it was all sprinters. Um, before it was all sprinterized to 156s and then 158s. Um, uh, very much like the West Highland line, really, and sort of other rural Highland lines of Scotland, the Far North line as well, that goes up to Thurso and Wick from Inverness, um, which we will partly go along before pulling off, uh, pulling off um, onto the Kyle of La Calche line. Uh, well, it's secret, you see. Secret tracks. So have we got the right away now? Am I meant to be going? Probably meant to be going, aren't I? Probably take the brakes off then and off we go. So, we're meant to get to Muravord by half... It's 11.09 now. We're to get to Muravord by half 11. Probably not going to manage that because I was a bit late off the mark. Dingwall, 11.41. Yarv, 12.09. Aknachin! 1248. 
I'm speeding, naughty boy. Oh, okay, I am. I'm meant to be going now. Okay, well that's fine. Um, we're not out of the platform yet, anyway. Even though I am speeding. Please note, speed limit leaving the station is 50 miles per hour. Whoops. Uh oh. I'm not getting scored though, so it's fine. Maybe a good idea to make a note of the speed limit changes. You might need to know that when driving a DMU. Well, we're not driving a DMU, are we? And the fact that this is going to take around about da -da -da, three hours. Probably more, because I'll keep pausing it to fuck around. Means, A, you're probably all going to just, like, fuck off and go to sleep long before we get to the end of the route, which is fine. You can catch the end later on. And also the fact I'm not going to be driving a DMU on this anytime soon. There we go. So you can see top right on the map. We're just sort of leaving Inverness. We're heading along the Moray Firth towards Bewley, and then along the Bewley Firth. Beautiful little bit. You'll notice that the um, the clagging is lovingly modelled. We will when we when I put it into full throttle in a minute anyway. Um, first order of business for crossing the Ness Viaduct. This crosses the River Ness, which twists and turns further back down the way, ends up towards Loch Ness. Viaduct was washed away in 1989 by flooding and replaced. So the old viaduct looks like you can see there with the um, the arches here, and the new viaduct just looks like a new viaduct bridge. It's a 50 mile per hour bridge was built in 1989 after the original collapsed in a storm. The main thing we need to know is we can now put the throttle up to full. Here comes the flag. Nice big cloud of it there. As the engine throttles up. That's telling me to brake because there's a swing bridge up ahead. It's a 10 miles per hour limit over the swing bridge, which is a bit like the um, West Highland line Fort William to my leg that we did, where there's a swing bridge right at the beginning of that as well at Banavi. This one is it is it Clacknahari? Clacknahari! A bit racist. Sorry Scottish people. Clacknahari. I can't do that. I can't even do a comedy Scottish that Scottish accent. I can do a comedy Scottish accent, but not a comedy Scottish accent. Um probably not as bad as it sounds these days. Um the trains that run now are class 158, which are quieter than this. And also, there are only four trains a day on the line in each direction. So, you're probably talking about one every two or three hours. Probably break. This is like a 10 mile per hour speed limit coming up, and I'm doing 50. That will probably help. Come on, map update. Updating a little bit. Zoomed out a bit far at the moment. I can't be asked messing with it. We'll just we'll just deal with it being that zoomed out. There we go. Turn the brakes off. That sh should get us down below ten for this swing bridge. Now, normally you'd lose points if it was a career scenario, but it's not even a career scenario tonight. It's just a standard scenario, so it's just tough. Clack the Harry signal box controls both the bridge and protecting signals. From here, the speed limit is 65 miles per hour until we reach Bun Crew level crossing. I assume that's Bun Crew anyway, not Bun True or anything else silly. So we just have to creep over the swing bridge at slow speed. There's the big, that's the road bridge across the um, Murray Firth in the background there. It's an impressive video of that swing bridge and sort of zooming in um, on like the ends of the rails and the way they bounce up and down because they're not supported at the ends because they can't be like fixed in place because it has to the train has to sort of go across the gap quite impressive and it also shows you why it's 10 mile per hour across the bridge and not more because that 
epically fucked the track up. Yeah, we get to have another clag up in a minute. I let rip with the clag. It's always nice. So there we go, we're across the bridge. Now he can rev back up again. Here it comes. Ah, she blows. We like to see. Big old cloud of clag. Clagging along. Although, if I keep fucking around with the... Um... No, that's off on this one. It's um, it's the same as the reverse of being at 120 percent. There's actually five positions on this reverse, so instead of three, you've got off reverse engine on. Oh, sorry, four positions. Excuse me, off reverse engine only and forward. Um, and because of that, the um, the hood is a bit messed up. The brake is oh no, that's the throttle. I messed with that. Uh, the brake's there, sorry. The brake is fully released. I think that's something to do with brake testing or something, pushing it past 0%. Or overcharging them. <laughs> we now climb at 1 in 99 for three quarters of a mile to the side of the former station at Bun Crew. Bun Crew? Bun True? Bun Crew. It's got to be Bun Crew, surely. This section from Clackner Harry to Clunes was a double trap for many years. Wider alignment can still be seen most of the way. I assume it's Bum Crew. Or Bum Crew. Bum Crew. That'll do. Keep half an eye on the speed because we have to slow down to 45 in a minute. Bum Crew. Bum Crew. See, look, see, even, even the, the Scottish folks on the stream don't know how to fucking say these places, so. What chance do I stand as a southern Nancy boy Englishman? Gaelic for foot of the tree. Well, take your pick as to which tree that means. This map actually updated it. Yeah, no, it's not. Do, do, do. Oh, we're nearly at Bomb Crew Summit. I mean, you wouldn't want you wouldn't want a bum version of Crew. Crew's desolate enough. Now we're going to get another thing. Bomb Crew Summit station was located just beyond the bridge. <laughs> well, yeah, I was asked I was asked earlier on in Digi whether or not this was going to be an electric train in Scotland, and just laughter it's um it's not gonna happen station was located just beyond the bridge slow to 45 miles per hour for the crossing i believe it says something about the crossing being dangerous and that's why there's a speed limit through it it's called visibility or something but the station would have been just around about here nice flowers and so on marking the grave of where it used to be In there. Now we come around the curve, and once we're over that crossing, that oh, clag up to full speed again. As she blows. So we're on a section of the line that's sort of shared with the far north line at the moment. Until we get to Dingwall, where we will stay. Okay, some maps really annoying me. Come on! That's better. It needs to be behaving itself now. It's a bit of a bastard. It gets a bit finicky. There's a little bit of um, tilt canting there on the track. To allow me to corner at the heady heights of 60 miles per hour. 
So it's almost like the APT, but not quite. Not quite that good. Yeah. 65 miles per hour. I can't even stick to that. Come on, slow down. Going a bit downhill, I think. Or is it a bit uphill? <laughs> that full wound to my leg was a great crawl. The Carl of Luck Alstein has repeatedly been threatened with closure. It was going to be closed on the beaching and all the locals kicked off and said, don't you take our train away, motherfucker. But it stayed open. There were moves to close it later on as well. Uh, where was it? 1970? There were moves to close it again and all the locals said, fuck you, don't take our train line away. So it didn't get closed. Uh, this is the former station at Lentron. Indeed, the loop remained in use until RETB. Some believe it should have remained to break the section from Muravor to Internet. But yeah, well, some people fuck off. Internet. Invernet. That's the old station buildings there on the old platform. We're just razzing along. I'll just drop down to 50 in a minute. Not got too excited with the old throttle. Uh, so yeah, the, it was reported that the cost of operating line was three hundred eighteen thousand pound per annum in nineteen seventy one, and it was getting revenue of fifty one thousand pound per annum. No, two hundred and what? Two hundred and sixty? Two hundred and seventy thousand pound loss, uh, which was a lot of money in nineteen seventy one, equivalent to about. Well, the running cost for is about four million quid. Ah, shut up. It's only a bridge. It's fine. Look, most of the trains go in at 50 as we go over it. Winged you. And like I say, 1989, the, um, the bridge at the River Ness that we went over at the beginning was washed away. They, uh, they had to take trains over by road. They took sprinters over by road while they rebuilt the bridge. So the line was built in three sections. Uh, the section we're on now, the Inverness and Russia Railway, between Inverness and Dingwall, opened in 1864. The section between Dingwall and Strome Ferry, or I assume Strome Ferry, Stroma Ferry. Uh, this thing puts out 1,750 brake horsepower. That's the engine rating anyway. It obviously then gets um, translated into electricity and traction motors and all the rest of it. Um, so it's the old English electric type 3, class 37. Um, top speed is either 80 or 90 miles per hour, depending on which version of it we're in. I think this is probably the 90 miles per hour passenger version. Uh, this is the former site of Clune Station, the end of the former double track section. The stop board we have just passed is very rarely used. So this is, if you've seen the previous route run that we did between Fort William and Maleg, this is a radio electronic token block signal, which means normally you'll have a great big radio set somewhere in the cab. Um, this one hasn't got it modelled, it's just like pretending without actually simulating it, where you sort of radio to the signaler and they send you like an electronic token over the radio. It produces this wonderful um, modem-like um, white noise type sound as it arrives and that is how the rather than a physical token that's how the route is signalled um, it was previously physical tokens that and signals as in semaphore signals Just to give you an idea, the engines on these things, 15.45 um, litres per cylinder, 12 cylinder diesel engine. So it doesn't rev very la doesn't rev very high, but you get some idea of 
how much power is actually there. 630 to 900 RPM is a sort of rated um, rated revolution per minute on the engine. If you're approaching Bewley, speed limit will drop to 55. So we do um, break down. Yeah, so what well, you've got 15 times 12 liter engine. That's what 180 liters, 190 maybe. This is the Kyle of Lacalche line, correct? Probably shouldn't brake and try to throttle at the same time. Probably doesn't do anything brakes or the locomotive any good whatsoever. Uh, so we just passed uh, Marketh and Bewley South. Um, I think we're going to pass Bewley Station in a moment. The map is being a massive dick today. What did we pass Bewley Station? Uh, Bewley Station is notable for having the shortest platform in Britain, I believe. Or one of the shortest platform in Britain. Platforms in Britain. Originally it had a much longer platform, but it was cut down and cut back. And I think we're coming up to it now. Yes, we are. Here's Bewley Station. So there's this sort of original platform. That's all closed off. And... As we come through, you'll see the... Oops. I'll just put the free camera on for a second. That is Bewley Station now. Um, looking at a video of this before, it's fairly well modelled. There you go. That's, that's the platform at Bewley. You can get, what, maybe half a coach into that? Um, 37. And... Um... <laughs> Thank you for that, Memnonia. Yeah, um, your old Mark, Mark 1, Mark 2, 1, Mark 3, whatever Mark coaches. I mean, even a sprint is only going to fit most of one coach in there, so you're going to have to shuffle along to the right end of the train to get off at Bewley. They've got nice sort of open countryside, rolling hills, Holland, a few houses here and there. And a map that I'm going to just murder your eyes in a minute. Being a complete dick tonight. Stop fucking with it, really distracting me. My important train driving business. This is a bit of a clag of your camera once you rev up. The limiter game rises to 65. We climb at 1 in 99 to Muir of Board, where I've got to remember to stop. Now, I'm not sure why they cut it back quite so much. I'm sure there must have been reasons. Here you go, a nice big cloud of diesel smoke. That Enjoy that fresh Highland air. I'll take the brake off, it'll actually, you know, accelerate. By drive chains, they'd basically have to just continually fucking replace the brakes. Oh good, the map's finally decided to sort its life out. Good. Updating now? Good, yes, right, fine. So we sort of turned around the corner of a curve at Bewley, now heading northwards rather than westwards. So we sort of head northwards towards Dingwall. No, it's off. As I was saying before, that's off on the class 37. It's got some weirdo mechanic to do with the brake that means that that sort of overcharges it or something, I don't know. This is a distant board from Muravord and an indication that we need to slow down soon. We can shut down gradient speed, slow down, you can reset yourself. Shut down just as we get onto the road bridge, let gravity do some of the braking for us, okay. Sounds good to me. Uphill braking, that's what we like. AWS warning them for that. We need to stop, I think, and exchange tokens. It means this bridge up here. The 1 in 99 or a 1 in 100 incline, so we will slow down reasonably quickly, I think, it's like. Take the throttle off and put the brake on. Well, I don't know if it's going to slow down to 15 just for me taking the throttle off. I might need to do a little bit of the old brakey brakey. That's off. Brakes are off. There we go, right, road bridge. Throttle down. Yeah, no, I'm going to have to brake. 
This is where I end up doing about 10 miles per hour by the time it wants me to be doing 15. It's an uphill, doesn't really look it, but the... Um, that it's 15 miles an hour actually because that means I don't have to forget to stop at the station. Yeah, the gravity should do the rest for us. Come on gravity you wanker. There we go. That is an acceptable speed for entering the station. Light tells us that you're not allowed to go into the next section. The points, oh no, that's for the points. I should read the bloody sign under the board. Tell you which way around the points are set. The passing loop. I think it's 50 miles an hour for the points more than anything. Oh, I'm. My reverse is set to 120% forwards as well, so... <laughs> the gateway to the arse end of nowhere. They put that on the tourist information stuff. The Muravord is a single crossing loop, passing loop on the line between Dingwall and Inverness. And it's apparently the arse end of nowhere. The village of Muravord has a population of 3,026. Perhaps we take the local off the end of the platform and get all the coaches on it, so let's do that. Plenty of time, I'm only meant to be here at 11.30. There we go. Let's whack on the old brakes and unlock the doors and let the passengers out. They're getting out. Oh, look at that. Somewhat unrealistic numbers of passengers joining the train here. For a village of 3,000 people. Got a whiskey distillery, it's got a football team that competes in the North Caledonian Football League. If you've ever seen the standard of football in the Scottish Premier League, the North Caledonian Football League is what? I don't even know how many tiers below that. Let's let's just say you're you're talking basically non-league. It's not going to be Premiership. Well, they're an amateur team, so there you go. Jumpers for goalposts. That kind of thing. But they've got a logo for the league and for the football club, so... So let's just have a quick look around, as we sometimes do, at the um, modelling of the place. Yeah, it's most... <laughs> They've just sort of basically gone overboard with the trees, which is probably fair enough looking at the map because it is mostly green. They've just got some houses and stuff, which is probably fair enough for a small village. Doppler action. Oof. And it's got a footbridge and a road bridge, so. <laughs> Needs more downvotes. Make a screenshot because why not? I like to do that kind of thing. And we're nearly done loading passengers, so we'll be ready to be on our way. Um, you have the token and permission to proceed. Next stop, Dingwall. Or Dingwall. Or Dingwell. Or Dingleberries. Who knows? 11.41. There she clags. It is, it's, a, it's a true classic, the class 37. Class 37 on a Scottish route 
can't go wrong with that, I'm speeding. So there is a way you can go wrong and that's by speeding. But these stop boards are to sort of indicate to trains that don't have the radio electric token block system whether or not they can proceed. Ain't token and permission to proceed, we've got token and permission to proceed. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is the famous active clag that they were trailing because it's the same company or if this is just like a previous version of active clag. This is like active clag 1.0. There is a passenger view in this, which is in first class. Got the sort of two plus one seating with the lovely patterning there and the lamp. The house is rolling past. You're aboard. Now it's time to rev up and get moving. I'm not sure the road has that much grass growing in it. I mean <laughs> so we're going to go via Conan Bridge on On Bridge and not stop there it was closed in 1960 and reopened in 2013 I'm not sure whether it's closed or not in this version of the line it would probably be open it doesn't really matter we're not stopping there but an uphill 1 in 240 gradient so the engine's not too quick off the mark, but it could be worse. It's not one of those bloody 1 in 30 jobbies. Not a great deal to do. Some cows in a field over there. That's about as exciting as it gets for scenery. Out here. Except blow the horn a bit for the level crossings. Not that there's anybody out here using a level crossing. Maybe a farmer. Looks like a sort of farmer. Annual level crossing, that one. And make our way onwards. Conan Bridge is... Yeah, Conan Bridge. Conan Bridge. Conan Bridge. Conan. I want to say Conan Bridge as in Conan the Barbarian, but it ain't. It's Conan. Or Conan. Or Conan. Whatever it is. Now this gets services along the West Highland Line. Not the West Highland Line. What am I talking about? The Far North Line and the Kyle of Lagalge Line. But also there are local services between Inverness and Dingwall, where there are still people sort of get on the trains that run along this section so me I realised we were about to start speeding no no crashes no spads probably Conan just just good honest class 37 driving so far god this that's a bit tight not a lot of clearance on that bridge. <laughs> or that one. The hell. I'd like to come through there with a steam engine with a great big chimney sticking up. Bornan. Oh, could be. I'm not stopping here, am I? No, I'm not. Just showing the thing as a stop just to piss me off. <laughs> Breaking a little bit because of that 40 mile per hour limit coming up. Probably. There you go. Oh, there you go, there's a station. But we have to slow down because we're. Uh, we have to slow down a bit. Um, my cone on bridge station tiny little station in the middle of nowhere. Um, we wouldn't have to slow down as much if we were in a DMU, but we're not. We're in a bloody great big locomotive, so we have to slow down a bit more for the bridge. Yeah, a bit more than this. Come on. Brakes, 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 brakes. 
Don't make me make the Jimmy Savile noise. There you go. Clattering across the bridge. Shitty bridge that you can't go across at full speed. Scotland. Is Scotland. Inverness to Carve La Calche. By a dingwall. Dingwall, not dingwell. Well, whatever. Ding something or other. A bit obscured that song. But he larded our multiple units 75 miles per hour, right? Well. Keep your modern fanny DMU things, because they don't do this. No, it's to do with the um, to do with the energy involved. The faster you go across something, the more energy is involved in the sort of transfer of forces. It's a very unusual it's a very unusual piece of modelling in that the sun is out and it's like a nice day. But here's Dingwall coming up now. Need to break for the station now. Oh yeah, we're stopping aren't we? Definitely need to break for the station then. AWS just went off then because I don't have a token for the next section. Obscured whistleboard, but there we go. Bonkty bonk. No, all the all the processor time has been expended on the um, clag modelling. <laughs> Dingwall has a population of five thousand four hundred and ninety-one. There's also a castle, which was once the biggest castle north of Stirling. The town's present-day outskirts is Tunnock Castle. May date back to the 12th century building or to a 12th century building. That's what there is to see in Dingwall. Oh, Dan, it's, it's got me to slow down awfully early for this station. Unless it's going to, like, jump out and put some fucking. ridiculous speed limit on it. Matam construction or Matam. Right, so the points are set. Not that tonic. Yeah, there is a secret 50 mile an hour speed limit that he wasn't telling me about. Cheeky bastard. Uh, tonic, T U N N O C H, not the other one. Well, usually there are two platforms, there's two lines. Don't get used to that, There's, you're not going to see much more of that after we pass through Dingwall. Line breaks off. Pretty much on time again. That can't be right. Not me driving trains to time, not being hilariously late. And puts the brakes on. Yeah, Tunnox is the name, not the place anyway. And also, it's not not it's spelled the same as the place. So, basically, nonsense. Doors are open, let's have a quick look around Dingwall. Yeah, it's just like some houses modelled. Modelled a church. Very nice. Modelled a castle. Assuming it is an actual castle and not for king, just a building with some ventilation. Old castle. Dubious reason. You know it. Yeah, anyway. Just sit here and pump out some diesel smoke into the local atmosphere. 
We'll do all the locals good. Have the token and permission to proceed to Garth. Booked time 12.10. Off and out to Garth. Got to, be, got to be doing some concentrating now. Not just looking at it clagging. But it is mesmerising just watching it clag up. And it is fun making it do it. And that's 20 mile per hour speed limit coming up. That's more like it for Ireland Scotland lines. That's more like it. There's a passing stop board there. See in a moment. Turn westward shortly. The West West Coast Main Line North route goes through Mother Pelt, so. No, it's it's not really physical tokens anymore. It's radio tokens. I the um, leg line. There you go. Off we go. We are now heading towards the Kyle of Lacalche, not the Seven Wick. Thanks. So like, yeah, you can go. You can do forty driver. No, actually, you can do twenty driver. Don't get too excited. That marker board means we've left station limits uh, for radio electric token block. You may or may not remember that. I didn't remember it till I looked it up. A shame that it's not fully functional with all the voiceover and shit that the ballet line has. That's quite fun. I think it's just a twenty. Like it's a quick. The description will probably say in a minute why it's 20. And it's a tight curve, curving away. You can see we're curving away pretty sharply from the north now, heading back towards the west. And I just need to slow it down, because that 20 limit is right on top of us, and I'm just pissing about slowing the lines curving. There we go. Please sound the horn many times on the approach to these crossings. The limit over the crossings is 20 for passenger and 10 for freight. The limit in between is 20. But we're a passenger train, so we can do 10 throughout. Still. And now we are on the Carl of Lacalche line proper. Flashing warning beacons. I assume they're to say that the crossing's down and safe to cross. Train driver? I don't know. Those barriers are up. Those barriers need to not be up. Yeah, I quite fancy a go on this line. Uh, I should really be stopping because the barriers are up, but fuck off. It's very late of them. Oh, well. I think we got away with it. I didn't get a spad and a game over, what, 49 minutes into the trip? Well, it's not 49, I think I was late, so it's 40, 40 minutes in. I'm researching how to drive the line in a class 37, because obviously that's the most important thing to research. So after this crossing, we, got, we can get up to 40. Oh, good, that one is down. The indicator saying that it's down. There's no sort of conventional signalling along here apart from that kind of thing. There's no semaphore signals or anything. All done through electric tokens. Or in the case of train simulator, it's not done through anything, it's just done through messages saying, yeah, go on then. We go. And away we go. That's more like it. That's what we like to see. All this namby pamby low revs nonsense. Bulk lag ahead. 
well. Quarter mile per hour flag ahead. I'll just very quickly whiz up the map so you can see now you sort of go around this right hand curve almost. This um, 90 degree curve. A bit of dingle, and now we're just going to head, head out along the valley. Along the valleys. Multiple valleys. So we are now on the Dingwall and Sky Railway, which was opened in 1870. In August 1870. Uh, running between Dingwall and Strom Ferry. Strom Ferry, or whatever fucking combination it is. So that's the majority of the line. Majority of the length of the line. Um, the Strom Ferry is there, near the left hand side. Near Plockton and Kyle, and the actual last bit of the line later. Odyssey Distant Border is another short section stop border head which is not used often. I'm assuming we're not going to be using it today, are we? Or we might be doing. Strom Light Frog. Strom Ferry. Strom Ferry, whatever. Whatever. 35 miles per hour past this board because we're not on multiple unit and then down to 20 for a bit and then back up to 35. This is more like it. This is the Highland Railway experience that I like. Low speed, lower speed and then low speed again. Odyssey Junction, the line to Strathpeffer. Strathpeffer? Used to leave to the left here, the track body is easily visible. Speed limit is 20. Whilst DMUs can get to 40. Gradient rises at 1 in 50. Crikey. Slow down then. Oh yeah, you can see a straight line. That sort of straight line peeling off. That way, I think, unless there's going to be a really more obvious one here. 20 miles per hour across this bridge for a big hefty locomotive. And frankly, this bridge probably looks like it needs to have 20 miles per hour across it. It looks a bit weedy. You can see why that might be a low speed limit. Oh, and we are going uphill. I do need a little bit of throttle there to get it fucking moving. They weren't joking about it being 1 in 50, correct? Need a bit of throttle to get moving. Well, we're going to be going backwards. So now the engine's working at full pelt, we're not even going anywhere at any great speed. Good old gravity. This speed, I want to bounce it around as the train stretches out and then pulls back in together again. Right, let's see if we can get to 35. Even if we can't get to 35, we'll at least have suffocated some wildlife with diesel fumes. I mean, train simulator wise, that's not a bad view. It, I mean, the engine's old and creaky, but, you know, it's doing its best to render the. The um, the Kyle of the Kalsch line. Probably saying that wrong as well. Christ, this locomotive is struggling up the hill. The brakes are off, but what he says. He does not like this gradient. 40 mile per hour is going to be optimistic. Now, this is probably one reason why they replaced them with the sprinters, because they're lighter. A better power to weight ratio than a, a locomotive plus carriages. Locomotives are heavy. The MUs can get by with a couple of little engines, not a great big fucking 180 litre plus engine weighing it down plus fuel. We are accelerating, but it's not going quickly. <laughs> Do 
do like a good incline up in the Scottish Islands. And this was probably like the flattest way to build the railway as well. Now the, the view looks... See, there's a pretty good view even for train simulator. It's doing a reasonable job of saying, yes, here are some fields on a big hill in the background. And here are some people just sat around ignoring the guy. Like, that's, that's the back of somebody's head. I wonder what that was then for a moment. The train simulator version of the back of somebody's head. I think we may be reaching our top speed up this incline now. Definitely, um, we're definitely struggling to get any faster than 30 odd. 34. Big engine or not. View down the valley side. His approach to another dangerous crossing at Acternead. Acternead? Acternead? Former station site gradient eases over the crossing but soon resumes. Oh, that's alright, we're not going to be going any faster than 35 over the crossing anyway, so. Don't think there's a limit required. No, there isn't. 40. Oh, and then it slows to 30 over the top. Well, that's good. Crossing, the lights are flashing. So, unlike the previous one, the barriers are actually down. There's your former station buildings. It's the railway cottages. There we go. Okay, it's definitely eased off slightly because the train's picking up speed. We may hit 40 at some point. I think about slowing it down a touch. Oh, there we go, back to 1 in 50. To full throttle now and just not worry about it. I mean, slow down for this 30 is just going to be take the throttle off, and there you go. You've slowed down to 30. It's keeping it at 30 that's going to be the challenge. The guard has just popped in on the left hand side of the map. <laughs> no brakes required at all. We're going to be doing 30 long in advance of that sign. <laughs> yeah, you know, only wants to, you only wants to do 30 up the hill, so that's why it's not going any faster than that. I assume it slows down for these curves. How do you think I actually have? They're apparently um, being withdrawn from the Cumbrian coastline shortly, so maybe I'll go up there next week and have a look. Or maybe I'll just sit on my fat arse and play train simulator. That sounds more likely, doesn't it? Yes, I think so. I can't be going outside, that would ruin my reputation. <laughs> yes, true, the worry lines. Um, we've done worry lines on here. They're 30, with 37s as well. So, yeah, there's still, there's still a few running about. That's the thing about the Class 37, I mean... They've just been around forever. Forever and ever and ever. Well, 
forever and ever and ever. They started being built in 1960. They built 1960s, 1965. They're getting on a lot, getting on a bit. You know, you're talking well over 50 years old. Well, coming up to the top, just about. I'm assuming that that is Raven's Rock up there. Final approach to Raven's Rock Summit. Be careful. There is a bridge reaching of 20 for loco hold stock. But basically, it's saying keep it in your pants. Oops. I've already let it flop out of my pants too early. Hey, it's smooth sailing from now on. Even though I'm going to have to break for 20 in a minute. Ready to easing off. And then we're now heading downhill. There is some procedural tree generation in the software, so that's probably what these 3D ones are. Those 2D ones are like just like background and the optimization. Be ready with the brakes. There's just sort of flat sprites, which, given the train simulator engines, brake you shit. Given the train simulator engines limitations, bloody hell. He did tell me to be ready on the brakes, but I didn't listen. Tot tot, speeding across the bridge. Gonna get fired. What a shite little bridge that is. I think I put the brakes into emergency briefly, so we'll be doing 20 for quite a while. We'll be doing 10 for quite a while while they recharge. Come off. But still, what a shitty bridge is that? Can't you build a better bridge? I suppose, again, these days it doesn't really matter because the uh, multiple units can go across it whatever speed. We've got just enough time to get up to 30 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour, before we have to brake to go down to 30 miles an hour. Well, downhill braking and shit. I'm going up and down hills in a class 37 at like 30 miles an hour. What what could be more exciting than that? Certainly Air Force One doesn't have trains in it as far as I'm aware. Or if it does, they're not the central plot element, unlike Swery Train Simulator. It by all means, go and watch Air Force One. I mean, by the time it's finished, we might still be going, to be honest, the amount of time this route's going to take, so... I think that's 30 limit just for the curves. Pop the brakes on just to make sure we don't exceed the speed limits. <laughs> that was um, unstoppable they made. I don't know if it was Denzel Washington, but... Yeah, unstoppable. Quite a good film actually, that. Denzel Washington and Chris Pine. I mean, it's extremely silly. Don't get me wrong, because like it's like it's so painfully generic. The setup is like, oh, the old guy who's going to be retiring soon has to train the new guy how to drive the trains, and everything's changing and being modernised and. The old guy doesn't believe in it and all the rest of it, but it's good film. It's entertaining enough for a sort of blockbuster about a train. I would certainly agree it's more entertaining than this because I'm not like getting out, actually getting out of the train and running along along like the top of it or the side of it to couple or set handbrakes or whatever it is that happens. 
Well worth a watch though, unstoppable if you haven't seen it and you like train things. It's got some good US locomotives in it. I mean, they're fucking ugly because they're US loco locomotives and all US locomotives are fucking ugly, but... Oh no, I take it back, there's a couple on the East Coast, um, the East Coast Corridor that aren't fucking ugly, but most of them are. Now, the only reason the ones on the East Coast aren't ugly is because they're manufactured by European manufacturers. Or they're manufactured by American manufacturers using European manufacturers' designs and technology. I'm not biased against, like, US design, but it is fucking ugly. But then, you know, the US people say that our trains look ugly as well. I mean, a US person would possibly look at the 37 and say, God, that's ugly, so... And I don't know why they'd say that, because it's obviously not. It's actually, obviously, you know, really beautiful, but... By the way, um, you can see him there. It's the Ipswich Prozzy Basher is in the driving seat. I tell you what we are missing. We haven't had any, any much in the way of prostitute reviews tonight. I am not saying that they're missing them, but I mean I assume it's just because there's like there's no prostitutes along the route, because there's nobody along the route, it's just through countryside yeah, Wagyu well, isn't here yeah so you like the local sheep would be the be the extent of the reviews. This is more like it. This is this is this is proper Highland railroading. Just trundling along. The engine's in idle. It's very slightly downhill, so we're just coasting at the line speed of 30 miles an hour. None of this fucking 65 miles an hour bollocks that we had before when we were on the sort of main line. Or as main line as it gets in the north of Scotland anyway. <laughs> Expecting there to be a guy on a banjo sitting by the line in a minute. <laughs> there we go. The gradient now eases for the run alongside Lock Garve towards Garve itself. Oh. Garve, oh, there you go. There's the lock. There's some really badly modelled water flowing into it. It doesn't really matter if the gradient eases or not because, like, the speed limit is still 30. No, to be fair, Rich, there's Scotland and then there's Scotland. There's Metropolitan Liberal Elite Scotland and then there's um, Redneck Scotland. <laughs> it's just the crowd's keeper Willie thing all over again. Scottish people read Scotland. Whatever it is. I can't remember the exact quote. So yeah, the gradient's nice and flat now, but it's not like we can do anything about speeding up or anything, because it's just 30 miles per hour through all these curves. That's it. Damn Scots, they ruined Scotland. I was close, but no cigar. No, no, don't be racist. both road and railway together. Again, I think they're, they're probably pushing a bit with the road having grass going through it. I suspect it's better maintained than that. <laughs> yeah, we've we've done my leg line on here as well uh, some time ago and it looks it looks pretty in um, train simulator shit -o vision so I assume it'll be actually quite nice in real life. There's like, like I say, the car line, the foot, the um, Glasgow to Fort William, and then Malig line. 
The only problem is they take fucking hours. Because of this, basically. It's just 30 miles per hour all the way through, or 20 miles an hour on the Malig line. Um, because of the curves, because the track isn't you know, solidly maintained and built to that high speed standard. Um, because of the gradients, um, because of the weak bridges. So, what should he? What should you know? Even be a reasonably quick journey isn't because of the route that the railway has to take to get through the landscape. But I suppose it's kind. Of, it'd be kind of chill to like get the train out to Malague and then either back or I don't know if there's anywhere to even spend the night in Malague and then come back. Having said that, I mean. What is there in Malag to actually look at? There's like a ferry port, which isn't anywhere near the place now. It's like up the further away, isn't it? And there's a chip shop. That seemed to be about it, from what I could tell. Again with this 40 mile per hour ship, when we have to slow down to 15. Yeah, I suppose summer season, loads of people go out there for scenery and fishing and whatnot by the waterside and boats riding tours or whatever it is they do from LA. It's like a touristy place, I suppose. It's how the fishing trades sort of died on its arse. Need to slow down because we're about to come to Garth, as you can see on the map. And that's probably most of it, like two caravans and some barns. And there's a guy with his dog. That's actually the guy that's always stood at the platform and his dog looks like it's just been killed and mounted stuffed. It doesn't look very animated, so... I mean, maybe, maybe that's, that's what that guy does. He just... That's his job. He has to stand and wait for the train and look at his watch. And then he sends a letter of complaint in if the train's not on time. He stands there with his dead dog that's been stuffed. There we go. There's Garth Station on another passing loop. And I feel a view back in. Turn off my bionic train driver vision. Probably pronouncing that wrong as well for all I know. Goes off to a siding. And against all odds there are people waiting here for a train as well, which seems unlikely. Again here's your passing place. Passenger usage last year, 3,668 journeys or passengers used Garth Station, just to give you an idea. Like I say, there's probably two or three services along the line per day. No, it's, I said it's about four, isn't it? Four each way. Anyway. Uh, it's one of those level crossings that's designed to absolutely piss off the, the road users. Not that the road users seem bothered because they just carried on driving through as if... Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, there's some train simulator fuckery for you. They drive, they drive up to the crossing, disappear, and then they spawn a new on the other side. Is it the same car? No, it's a new car spawning. <laughs> Did they not realise that, like... If you stop the train, you'll be able to see that shit happening. Come on, guys. Well, it is a, a non-barrier crossing, an open crossing. They are a rarity in the UK. Again, I suppose the slow speed of the trains coming through and the fact that there's a clear, clearish view of them coming across um, and the fact that there's not many trains per day means that it's not economical to whack barriers on it. It's also a very oblique angle crossing. Yeah. There you go. Garve at one point was intended to be a junction for the Ullapool and Garve Railway. Intended to connect Ullapool 
Western Isles nearest mainland port with the rest of the UK. An Act of Parliament was passed, but it never got built. But this is back, back in the good old days of like the 1800s when they were building all these railways initially. The first railways needed to have an Act of Parliament for every single one. Um, that was built to allow it to be built. That slowly got rolled back later on, but initially it was quite expensive because you had to bribe all the MPs to vote for your Railway Act of Parliament, pay for the drafting, the expertise and all the rest of it. Nowadays we just don't build railways, or we, we build them at massive, massive cost and bulldoze loads of houses for no reason. Just to get to fucking Birmingham more quickly. If they were selling it as getting away from Birmingham more quickly, they'd probably get more support. But it's being it's being marketed as a two-way line, high speed two. And well I mean you don't wouldn't want to get to Birmingham anymore quickly. So next station is well the next place for stopping anyway is Aknasheen. Aknasheen? Up to time 12.48 to 49. And again, that's probably because the speed limit's probably about 10 miles an hour all the way along the fucking line. And it's got nothing to do with it actually being that long away. I mean, the Kyle of Lacarche line from, I think it's from Dingwall through to Kyle of Lacarche is only 60 miles. 63 miles. Which you wouldn't think would take like two and a half hours to drive along, but... You haven't accounted for the terrain. But, yeah, so I'm not likely to drive through any cars, but they are just popping out of existence. In that gloriously crappy train simulator way. Probably find a photo of that crossing for comparison later on. Make sure to blow your horn on departing due to the level crossing. Oh well, a bit late now, isn't it? <laughs> Don't exceed 15 until the rear of your train leaves the loop. The gradient is a solid 1 in 50. Oh, good. Well, if the dozy cunts can't see me coming in this train and they need a horn blast to fucking see it coming, then I can't help them. They deserve to just be run over by the train and die. Uh-oh, speeding. That's all right. The gradient's stupid. If I can just stop accelerating, then it'll break it for me. But I need to do a bit more throttling because the gradient is so high that if you slow down, it'll just roll backwards eventually. Gradient's high, gradient's steep. There we go. We can, we can get up to 35 now, which will take all of about the mile that it says it's going to be 1 in 50. Uphill. There she goes, up the hill. Would it be a mountain? Who knows? I was screenshotting a lot along the way tonight because it entertained me to do so. Put them into my spank bank for later on. So, I mean, yeah, pretty much we're just uphill. Um, see on the right hand side, Loch Luchart. Luchart? It's going to be Luchart, isn't it? Uh, on the map, on the left of us, but you will probably won't see it on the left of us in Train Simulator. Because there are trees in the way and probably hills in the way. Yeah, but it's on the other side of this sort of range of hills. And I'm going to guess if I do fly over here and over the top of the hills that. Oh no, it's there! Fair enough. Fair play. They've. Um... They've at least um, countenanced the possibility of some prick deciding to fly over the hill to see if the lock's there. I say I think the railway might get a bit nearer to it in a minute or two. It sort of winds its way around the valley. Marker at Gorston. Gorstan, Gorston. So we'll see what the game has to tell us about the route when we get there. Probably that, oh, it's you can do 40 now for a bit, but only for like 20 metres and then you have to slow down. 
<laughs> that Welsh is brummy. That's what I usually get. Loch Luichart. I just can't do it. Loch Luichart. It's not happening. I'm not a native speaker, that's the problem. Give up. Give up. Yeah, I've got I've got the CH down, I've just not got anything else down there. Just the whole rest of it is fucked. Loch Luchart. Hey ho. I don't know why I took the throttle off then. It was only briefly, but it was long enough for it to like lose five miles an hour speed. The gradient's easiest here to one in sixty. Oh great! It should allow you at least to begin gaining speed. Well, thank you very much. You big steep wanker. Gain speed what to fucking forty miles an hour? We'll be there in no time at forty miles an hour. No time at all. I said 1 in 60, it's actually 1 in 76, which is a, a lower gradient. Not that it's helping us actually gain any speed. I mean, the acceleration's slightly faster, but... That's... Cory Moily... Cory Moily... Cory Moily... Cory Moily... Cory Moily... Cory Moily... Bug knows. That's not even got a CH in it, I can't fucking say it. Goodness me. What a fucking idiot. Ooh, pylons. Ooh, that's the wrong view. I know we're still going uphill, I need to I need throttle. Excitement of some pylons. I think we might actually see the, the loch. to be quit across the top of the hill as well, so I'm going to have to start thinking about braking soon. God forbid we do 41 miles an hour down this stretch of track. We might end up going back to the future. This is a summit. Notice I carefully avoided trying to pronounce that again. Line drops steadily from here down to Loch Luichart. Loch Luichart. You ready with the brakes? We're not kidding. I'll put the brakes on now. My shed there. We're about balanced now. We're gaining speed slightly down the hill. That will do for now. Not rock the boat by taking the brakes off anymore. Putting them on anymore. I imagine in reality she's like come around this curve and then the lock comes into the view. Well, in a minute anyway. It's actually quite nice, although the trees are a little bit in the way. I imagine it's quite a good view. This line performs pretty well because pretty, pretty much all the detail is just hidden by trees. You don't have to worry about anything. Oh. Flattened out a bit. Get the brakes off a minute. So don't slow down too much. There we go. Picking up speed again. Just try and balance out on the brakes. There's the water you can see just behind the trees there. There we go. And you, you sort of get a view across the loch to the hills beyond. There's some glitching, but that's part of the course in Train Simulator. Wouldn't be Train Simulator without it. Tweak the brakes off a little bit again. If 
<laughs> it's it's right along the lock side. It's the lock side, the lock side. It's a bit hard to see with like the darkness of the map. Yeah, how can we can go around all these twisty tur turny curves at 40? And then 30 was the speed limit for the other ones. It's just not consistent. I'm going to write a letter of complaint to British Rail. There we go, there's a better view of the loch. Oh, let me guess, I have to fucking brake to 10 miles per hour to go across a bridge, Ed. Wait for it. I did see this bridge in the distance. No, well, there's no speed limit sign, so I'm not stopping. On the right is Loch Lewichart Hydroelectric Power Station. Is it? Apparently it is. Well, that's exactly like... That's exactly like all the hydroelectric stations I've ever seen. Fair enough. Hydroelectric Power Station, lads. Even if it did distract me slightly. Yeah, yeah, we, let's have a, a meet around what's whatever there is of the village down here. So, coming along the loch. loch. Oh, Achnitin, yeah, sure. I think, we're, well, we're stopping anyway, so. Yeah, there you go. Uh, this station was actually moved from its original location and the track was moved around as well for, to enable that hydroelectric scheme to be um, constructed. But we ain't stopping here. I don't think there's a lot here to actually stop for. The Ulchluichard station normally request stop but not in the time double for our service. Aha, we're not stopping, you have to wait three hours for the next train. Ooh, it's got a bunch of toilets on the platform. I think that's the most exciting thing. Um, the most exciting thing you'll hear about Loch Heart all day. Station passenger usage 532. We sort of come around the, the top end of the um, the loch now. Oops. Getting over enthusiastic. Oh god, we're going uphill again. Maybe I was right. Maybe I was wrong to get over enthusiastic and go up 42 instead of 40. But loch a queen, loch a queen. That's, that's my attempt. Make of it what you will. Not climbing yet, it's still flat. I'll know about it in a minute though when the speed drops by about 10 miles per hour in two feet. There we go, there it is. It's throttle time, baby. Let's clag it up. And away we go. I say away we go, I mean we're sort of slowly creeping upwards. We're even accelerated anymore. This really is a bit of a, a bit of a slog for the old um, 37, or indeed anything that was coming up here. I wonder what it's like in a DMU. I guess I'll find out one day. There's some water, look. Very exciting. A little hydro scheme over there, maybe. Oh, there we go. It's flattened down now. It's going to catch me out. I'm going to speed if I'm not careful. The bridge. Yeah, I'm going to speed if I'm not careful. How far to the next stop? It's 12.23, the next actual stop is 12.48, so another 25 minutes yet. Yeah. 
probably easy to look out the, the front or the side of the 37, to be honest, to go through with the scenery. It's a bit, um, a bit bare now. I don't know if it's just because we're getting a bit higher up, so there's less in the way of trees and stuff up here. Possibly it. All sorts of high moorland, sheep grazing territory. Oh, we're going down 1 in 50 now. We're doing it at 41 miles an hour, which is speeding. You're a bad man, speeding in the tray. Whoops, okay, not that much braking, please. What's going on there? The water reflection is a bit shoddy as well. Oh, good, we get to slow down to 20 miles an hour in a minute. My favourite. So let's not accelerate too much because we're going to have to break to 30 and then to 20 and then to 30. Sadly, I don't think we're going anywhere near Loch Fannick. Up at the top there, or Loch Fannick as I'd probably pronounce it as I get it wrong. There's Achenault East, it says. Going to tell us about now. Prepare to slow for 20 over. Oh, over the viaduct. Okay, the limit for DMUs is 40. LHS plus first to curve. Much slower. Okay. But it says the limit's 30 there. You lying bastard. Let's slow down to 20 so we don't break the viaduct or cause any long term damage. Or get too excited by going too fast and getting a nosebleed from the amount of speed that we build up. I mean, this is no. Oh, it's, a, yeah, it's I suppose it's for the curve rather than the rather than a viaduct as such. It's more like an earth bank, splitting the line, splitting it in two. Or is the viaduct coming up? I think the viaduct might be coming up round the bend. Okay, I'll allow it. Your missus has decided to watch Wrath of Khan. That's disgraceful. This is much more exciting than Wrath of Khan. Watching a train go at 20 miles an hour for three hours. Ah, oh, there we go, there's a viaduct. It's a viaduct, I mean, it's... Again, it looks like one of those modern ones. Oh, okay, I can probably see why that's 20 miles an hour over there, because, like, it looks like it's made of, like, three planks of wood and some rails. <laughs> I wouldn't want to go over there at more than 20 anyway, even if it is 40 near the MU. Is that Loch Achenault? Maybe. Yeah, that's probably quite a nice view in reality. Train simulator doesn't really do it justice. <laughs> I'm like very intelligent. Bigly intelligent. And not just some mad old cunt that all the mad old cunts have elected. Oh yes, there's some clag. But not for long. 40 miles per hour or not, we're going to slow down to 20 for the station. Just fucking cock teasing me now. Uh oh, oh no, just about got away with that. <laughs> Brain Force Plus and Buck Fast, that heady combination. Probably going to have to think about putting the brakes on at some point for that 20 mile an hour limit, eh? Problem with slow speed is. Yeah, you can, you've got more space to break because you're not going as fast, but at the same time you do get a little bit cocky and overconfident. 
Or in this case, a little bit cocky and underconfident, because I could have braked much later than that. Why would you do that to yourself? I mean, why just why would you watch InfoWars, Somnia or not? I mean, I know it's batshit crazy and entertaining because of that, but still. You're fucking poisoning yourself without even realising it. <laughs> it's, it is fucking mental. <laughs> it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. 20 miles an hour through Achenalt railway station. What is there to see? Well, there is, there's like two, three cottages and a house there. That's probably it. Achenalt is another request stop for most trains. The line now rises for the amazing distance to Achnesheen. Achnesheen. Way back in 2012-13, Achenald Station was seeing 164 passengers a year. Apparently 424 in 2016-17. Mostly people who came along and went, Yep, there's fucking nothing here, and now I've got to wait three hours for the next train. I would imagine. Four trains call, four trains each day on weekdays and Saturdays, one train on Sundays each way. If you miss the train, you're fucked. For several hours or for the rest of the day on a Sunday, you're just going to have to go and sleep in a field somewhere. Now the line, as it said, the line is climbing. They're putting gay in the tap water is probably one of my favourite rants from Infair Wars as well, but Jesus Christ. It doesn't mean you have to have to watch it and subject yourself to it more than once. The, the crazy might be catching. Oh, no, 40. Out with the old fucking acceleration here. Dark machine just appeared in the bottom left. Oh, that means about well, three, three and a bit miles. I know three and a bit miles to a marker saying something about the line. So, uh, uh, maybe four or five miles. We're only timetable to be in there in a bit, another. Well, almost 20 minutes, like 18 minutes, 17 minutes, so don't hold your breath. We're not going to be going at any high speed anytime soon. Is that a dip in the line? That is a big dip in the line. Ah, I saw that coming and put the brakes on. Fuck you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Alex Jones' attempts to say, oh, it's, I'm just playing a character. I'm not completely crazy honest. Like, yeah, you are. You're fucking mental. Honkity honk, motherfucker, up and over the bridge and past a level, another level crossing by the look of it. It says the line climbs the Achenachine. It seems to be like up and down, up and down. Just trying to catch me out. So it knows how fucking unattentive I am. The random dirt track level crossing, probably a one for farmers. Farmers, just what whoever the local farmer is. There you go, there's your sort of moorland up on the hills.
I mean, fair play to InfoWars, they've found a rich vein of idiots to exploit and make huge amounts of money off selling them basically like sugar pills. Or what amounts to the effectiveness of a sugar pill. In the... Or maybe it's got some caffeine in it, so that does have an effect, but come on. So it seems to be a weirdly American monetization thing, like selling nutritional supplements. When I say supplements in inverted commas. <laughs> seems to be a lot of it about. There was like a, a YouTube channel that I followed that was like all medical procedures and shit. They used to just post like videos of stuff that they were doing in the ER, like emergency operations. And now like every single video of his ends with him pushing like this. Oh, this restful sleep formula shit, whatever it is. Obviously it makes money, otherwise they wouldn't do it. It's, you know, another way of monetizing their YouTube channel, I suppose. Maybe I, sh maybe I should come up with a train driving supplement for a plane train simulator. Train Force Plus. Good job there isn't a webcam on me now because I'm sat here, you know, with a really smug expression on my face. Having made that up, even though it's really obvious. Infowars does not run a fucking loss. It makes huge amounts of money selling shitty overpriced supplements. You can fuck off. That's just that's just again part of the marketing. I don't I mean I assume his tax returns aren't fraudulent and he actually you know bangs out how much he earns, but I'm pretty sure he's in millions of dollars. It's really funny though, like when it, it is like when they go to the adverts, it's like, oh, it's, it's just got to keep the lights on another another hour if people buy this. It's like, for fuck's sake, really? You guys are really falling for that. The liberals would love to see us shut down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. I love it, but at the same time I hate it because it's just such obvious bullshit and there are so many people who go for it. And like I said, that's probably because I'm a metropolitan liberal elite, but... Jesus Christ, guys, come on. Apply a little bit of common sense and thought. They aren't putting gay in the water or you'd be sucking cocks from morning to night. Very, very much like flat mall, and we're sort of up, up the up, 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 bottle down, brakes on. Whoa, not on that much though. Chill. Mind you, there's a 35 limit, so it doesn't really matter. That is true. Bankers are well known for their communism. We are now approaching the steepest gradient on the line. You may use gravity to knock the five mile per hour for your speed to get you down to 35 for the tight corners at the top. The limit for units is 40. Well, I've already used the brakes to knock it off because I sort of got panicked and put them on too much, so. Yeah, it's, it's all George Soros, actually. His investment fund. So, 1 in 40, it says in a minute. Well, it is looking like it's going to be. I uh, probably better just make sure we're keeping up to 30. Okay, there it goes. Up we go. And I'm at full throttle and we're losing speed. Oh, we're just about balancing speed. Mind you, it's not for long. About slowly losing speed of the 1 in 40, but that's fine. It won't be for long. So we can do about 30 of the 1 in 40 grading. God, that really does look as steep as the game is making out. And now it's going to flatten out. And now I'm going to end up speeding. It heads downhill again. Let me throttle off. Tweak the brakes on slightly to stop us from going over speed. There we go. That was that was that was as exciting as any blockbuster movie or video game that you'd care to mention. Just getting over the top of that the top of that little summity bit. 
There was suspense and drama to try and make it up to the top. Yes, it just about did. And then what it's speed coming down the other side. No, we, we added that off as well. Now we can get back up to 40 and get on our way again towards Achnachin, which is a mile away. And it looks like we're going to get there 10 minutes early unless the speed limit's 10 miles per hour all the way down. So there might be a bit of a... There, there may well be a bit of a pause at Achnachin to allow you to go and make your coffee. I might go and have a wee as well as we wait there. But not a shit, because that'll take 10 hours, not 5 minutes. There we go, there's, there's your scenery, your, your rolling moorland and a river meandering along the valley. It is a river and it's not a fucking... It's meant to be a stream or a river or something, it's not a, a road. Oh, here we go. There's distant board for Achnachin. Back to 1 in 60. Just use the gradient to slow down a bit. Gradient Historia. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Dad's nearly as bad as Train Force Plus. <laughs> They're all centrists. None of them are, are, are right-wing lunatics at all. They're all centrists. They're all rational people. It's these hard left folk that believe that, you know, there should be health for people and... You know, public health care and that kind of thing. Those communist fuckers. Those are the ones you've got to watch out for. Not the brave centrists who think the black people should all go back to Africa. They're just saying what everybody thinks. They're speaking up for the silent majority. <laughs> That's the problem. I like, um... Super Retroid on Twitter seems to permanently have his um, YouTube recommendations poisoned by the, the right-wing shit. He, he went through a phase where no matter how many times he told YouTube to fuck off, he was continually getting them. <laughs> Jacob Rees-Mogg isn't lovely. He's a complete prick. Oh, the pig fucking... The, that's the only the only episode of Black Mirror I've watched to like start to end is the pig fucking one. The very first episode. I've not watched any uh, any more of it. Well, no, I watched like half the second episode, then got bored. And didn't watch any more. Apparently it's all very good, but... I think the pig fucking one was just all he's ever needed to say. After that, what? where could you go from that peak? There's a train waiting to come the other way here at Achlachin. So yeah, we'll stop at the station, we'll have a quick look round. Well yeah, I suppose so, it's like three episodes each, but still. Yeah, I probably should, but you know. Can I be asked when there's so much anime in the world that I could be watching instead? Or I could be playing Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Up you cunt. There we go, doors are open. We're now here for the next six minutes, so go and have a piss or make a coffee or whatever. Wait for the other train's been waiting for us to move away. Here's the glory of Achnachin, which I assume is just like a couple of houses on the road. There's a gas station, because obviously in Britain we call them gas stations. I don't know if they call them gas stations in Scotland, but they call them gas stations in America. And yeah, I'm not convinced by the prices on that. I mean, I know it's rural and the prices are going to be a little bit higher, unless that's per gallon. Um, that seems a little bit high. To say the least. And what else is there? Yeah, there are some houses next to the road which still has grass growing out of it, apparently. And that's about your lot. That's as exciting as it gets. The passing place. There's a sort of station master's cottage. 
I don't know if that train's going to pull out, but I will leave you with a view of that class 37. Island rail, a bit blurry. Look, the Ipswich Prozzy Badgers been driving that one as well. As we wait here at Achnesheen to be allowed to go on our way. Although, technically, we should be allowed to go on our way. So he'll be like giving swapping tokens, and then they'll be like swapping tokens. Like good shit. So, yeah, back in a moment. Achnachin. Check out those high detail textures there on the door. The hood back on there. I'll tweet that later, Ross. Yeah, go on. Let's have let's have a mega mega portillo for a bit while we wait. Good shout. I mean, yeah, Achnachin is basically there's fuck all here. It's a small village in Russia. The village is situated on the River Brown at the junction of two roads built by Thomas Telford. Achnesheen is also known for postal district which covers several much larger communities, including Kinlochu, Pulyu, and Laid. Lida. Uh -huh. Village Railway Station was an important stop on the Carl of Lacage line, serving a large area of west of Ross. So I assume that the that the railway still breaks, but all freight and mail is by road. So yeah, used to, the mail used to come into this station. So that's why the area's Achnesheen postal area, even though it's Achnesheen's basically being a nice little bridge there, nice river. And there's a mast for the RETB. But, We've been sat here so long waiting for something to happen. I've even managed to boil a kettle. I'm going to grab my coffee and well, yeah, coffee to well, that's a good idea, isn't it? I'm going to be up to the bar for the three o'clock in the morning. But never mind, I don't have to deal with early so. I'll just fucking not sleep. I'll, I'll leave you with a giant portillo. And there'll probably be a, a, a pause anyway before it moves. I think we're. We've got 12.49, so I haven't got any. People have got nothing. Grab what you're gonna grab. It's all action and drama from now on in. Probably help if we don't pause the fucking game. Then time will actually pass in it, won't it?
Yeah, it's timetabled a bit funny, isn't it? There we go. We have the token and permission to proceed to Strathcarran. Book's time 1321. There's we just passed was 2882, the 1130 from Kyle. Right, all right, Michael, off you pop. Thank you for supervising while I was away making a, making a drink, making sure nobody got too rowdy. Um. So yeah, let's um, let's was the brakes off, was the throttle on, and go go go. I said go go go. I said go go go. Come on. Oh, you big claggy bastard. I'm surprised the other train didn't go anyway. Maybe maybe the AI's not turned on to take it out. Maybe it's just static. But with having the AI over a long length of line, is it can fuck things up. Maybe it was just deliberately left there as a static train. We climb at 1 in 60 after crossing the River Bran. Oh, there you go. That was, that was what the river was. High in fibre. Full of shit. Like me. Apart from I'm not high in fibre, I'm just high in fat. We climb at 1 in 60 after crossing the River Bran and head up towards Loch Gowan. I've got a Loch bit right. It's not any other, any other bit. But farewell, Achnashin, we hardly knew ye. Oh, 40 miles an hour, let's go. Let's stop fucking about. We might be late. There we go. Yeah, baby, up the one in 60 incline at 20 miles an hour. Everybody loves a good morning, 60. And uh, Achnishin Railway Station, I've got to say, or I don't know if I forgot to say or not, but passenger ridership was 3,000 uh, last year. There you are, it's a pretty major station compared to the one we were at before when it was like 300 came through. But to give you some points in comparison, Dingwall, the big junction station, 80,900. We turned off and came out this way. And in Vanessa Railway Station, 1.259 million. So it's getting a little bit little less busy as we get out towards the west. And that's because there's fuck all here, apart from sheep and hills and people who fuck their sisters apparently. Well, I'm reliably informed. Still, I mean, you'd fuck your own sister, not somebody else's sister. I mean, you, at least you know where your sister's been. Or is that not how it works? That's probably not how it works. <laughs> it does when it's going up the hills. A bit of extra power in that diesel engine. Does that even work on diesel engines? Yeah, I, there's nothing to couple to, but I suppose that's a... I love the just giant cloud of clag that it leaves behind when you rev it to rev it up a bit. We're downhill again now. Come on, brakes. Brakes, you shit, brakes. Winding our way down the hill. Gradient, whatever you want to call it. Not really, we're not really on a hill as such, we're just sort of going up and down a bit. The actual hills are sort of surrounding us. As we make our way through the valley. See on the sort of terrain map. Top right. Final one in 50 assault. Oh. You've piqued my interest now if there's going to be assault. 
There was the no, there was some AWS. It's mostly it's RETB, so there's a, there's bits of AWS as you come towards the stations where the loops are and stuff, remind you to slow down and stop. Um, but yeah, for the most part, it's not AWS. It's um, RETB. So the final one in fifty assault to Loop Summit, Lube Lube Summit. We're going to go to Lube Summit and do some assaults. Okay, begins along the shores of Loch Gowan. Oh, come on, let's have you. You promised me one in fifty. It's flat at the moment. Putting the throttle up to full is not going to get me anywhere unless you steepen up a bit. There we go. That's more like it. But yeah, there's, there is some AWS operation for the stations, but I mean, for the most part, no, there isn't much of it. But that's because there is. That's because there's four trains a day each way, and it's mostly single line. Not very many trains. It doesn't really need it. It's signalled via a different method. It's only really as the train comes into the station, as it's coming towards the end of the block, that he's got the token for that there's an AWS magnet to say, OK, you need to be slowing down now, mate. And if you don't acknowledge the fact that you're meant to be slowing down, it'll stop the train before it goes through the next section. I think there's also, those stop boards have a, um, a train protection warning system on them as well that stops the train proceeding if it's not got the token. I'm sure I read that somewhere. Sure, I read that somewhere. Or maybe I'm thinking of the Mallard line. Yeah, clagging up the hill. Oh, no, oh, no. The hill's not as steep as it was. <laughs> it looks like it's done robbing then. I'd say we should crowdfund buying it, but I've got nowhere to put a Class 37 locomotive. Uh, oh yeah, it is TPWS. That little blue light on the stop board is for TPWS. So basically, if you go past while this, this light is lighted, then your train will stop. But obviously not in this case, because it's not simulated. <laughs> Not simulated fully. It is on the Maleg, Maleg line that we did. The sort of flashing blue shit works. Oh, one in 60. We're going up again. Up, up and away. I mean, to be honest, if they're going to cut trains up, then it's going to be like the 60-odd year old ones, the 50-60 odd year old ones, locomotives. As much of a pisser as it is, there are plenty of these doing the rounds in preservation and stuff. Lots were built, and I mean, the fact that they're still working now is still a minor miracle on the main line. I mean, they have to go eventually. They built 309 of them. So, it's, it is a pisser that they have to go eventually, but still. It will be always be remembered in Train Simulator. But as we drive it up and over a hill really slowly. This is the summit of the Klein for Machine and is the summit of the line in general. We now drop virtually all the way to Kyle. Hooray! No more acceleration. Just brakes. Brakes all the way. Not. <laughs> Come on, slow down, you little fuck. <laughs> so we're lubing up for an assault on Kyle. And um, to answer your earlier question about Sanrio Boys, it's an anime series. And as far as I can tell, and after the first episode, the premise is basically. The, the guy has entered his second year at Japanese high school and he basically hasn't had his wicked way with any girls and he's a bit depressed about it. And he remembers, like, 
he's reminded that he likes one of the Sanrio characters. And then he finds out like a load of other guys who are all really like popular with the girls also like different Sanrio characters. And it just builds from that particular ridiculous. So it's like a basic like a Sanrio mafia. And he was like he was teased when he was little for liking one of these Sanrio characters. So Sanrio being Hello Kitty, Pooing, whatever else it's called. But most famously Hello Kitty. They have a load of other little characters as well. But it's like a mafia of these Sanrio loving high school guys. Um, and the subtext is extremely homosexual. Like, and I mean extremely. Extremely. There's a lot of. Um, in the first episode, the lot. Alone is like a half-naked shower scene, and another guy like looking at the guy in the shower and going, "Ooh, that's that's the exact noise he makes." Ooh, he's like checking out his ass or whatever. So, yeah, there's there's like a a gay subtext going on there as well, but it's probably not actually. It's, it's that thing where it's not actually a gay subtext, but it's it's meant to look like it is, but they're not actually gay, but they. Sort of just like rough house around and messy and get muscly and sweaty or whatever. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it does. Maybe it does go full gay later on. I don't know. Apparently, it's it's quite a famous manga, so be adapted. But for the first episode alone, I can say it's absolutely fantastically hilarious. So, I mean, the premise the premise alone is hilarious. A sort of Sanrio loving secret club. Well, it's funny. It's it's like um, it's it's quite a prevalent thing for there to be these like. They're, they're, I mean, they're, they're aimed at girls more than anything. To be these sort of prevalent things where it's all just like all boys. And if you watch it as a guy, you think this is a bit. They're all a bit very friendly with each other. And where's this going? But he never does go there. Now, that's not to say that there aren't other works of manga and anime in Japan that do go there. I believe. But in this case, it's all very innocent and light-hearted and amusing. I quite liked it anyway. First episode that I watched. So yeah, that answers your question. What is Sanrio Boys? <laughs> Everyone's life is better for having heard that now. There we go, just a bit of a tickle of the brakes on the way down the hill. Nothing too dramatic so far. Looks like the gradient's going to fall away a bit, so I might need to put them on a bit more. Again, it's just the scenery, bridges. Chugging along the river and the valley. We wind our way at 40 miles per hour through the highlands. As you do. As you do on a Saturday night. Probably a bit much when the acceleration on the, the line's just dropping away again at 1 in 70, so yeah, no, no acceleration. It's not the view I'm after, I'm after this view. You can see down the side of like the embankment work. From here, the line drops slightly at 1 in 50 down to Glen Karen. You must use your brakes to control your speed. If that's not advice for life, I don't know what is. The Glencarran Lodge is closed. As you can see there in capital letters, Glencarran Lodge closed. A little bit of flange squirrel there around these curves. We head down the hill. Or is that the brakes squeaking? Hard to tell what the intention is.
about keeping 40 down the hill. Or down the gradient, down the incline, I suppose. I don't know if you'd call them mountains or hills or down the valley. But whatever it is, we're doing 39 down it now. Slowly cruising our way through. Bridge coming up. There's the closed station. The former platform for Glencarran Lodge, which is located high up on the hillside to our right, it has been closed for a number of years. Where is that? High up on the hillside to our right? No, oh, it's not. Not there anymore, anyway, either way. The station's closed, the lodge isn't in the game. This is quite scenic. Along the riverside. Yeah, yeah, again, with the qualifier, it's quite scenic for train simulator. You can imagine it would look nice in real life on a sunny day. Down to 1 in 60 downhill, 1 in 50 downhill. Oh, it's picking up speed again. Chill out. Chillax, dude. It's all downhill from here. Don't get too excited and run away with yourself. See passenger view, there's just lots of trees and a, a river. There's a little waterfall there, I think. Huh. I'm just seeing things. Okay, fair enough. It's just making shit up now. Going cross eyed. Our way down the hill, and all. Ach na shalach, ach na shalach, ach ha 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 ha. We're creeping up on that in a mile and a half or so. Probably a warning board for that crossing, I didn't use it. I'm sure those little houses have got fantastic views, spoilt occasionally by a train. Well, I say spoilt, obviously I'd be more than pleased with the train coming across as well. That's the house, but others would be less so. Because they're fucking moaning twats. Achnashalach. I'm going to keep saying it in, in the hope that it's correct, but it's probably not. But the brake's off because the gradient is flattening out a bit. It's to have the brakes off for a little bit, but it's steepening again. Bump our way around the curves. Forest. Certainly for the trees, it's not much of a forest, I suppose. It's a few trees screwed about. Probably tell we've come down a bit lower again, down a gradient, because there's trees again, and it's not just flat moorland in the valley. I 
you see it's quite clear on the map as you get towards the bottom left there that it's sort of again flat valley bottom river running along it and settlements so there's the road running alongside as well now you often find in these sorts of places now, that's even less likely to be correct that looks like it's like a, a broken up concrete dirt track with grass growing through it not sure that's quite right this is the foot of the steeper section of the line. It now rises a little on the, the approach to Achneshelach Ach Station. That's over a mile away. See, so it's again being through the valley, the mountains or the hills surrounding it on either side. Nice flat valley bottom. Gotta like a nice flat valley bottom. Rundle along at 30 odd miles an hour, 40 miles an hour. 39 and a bit miles an hour. As we were promised by the route guide, we are climbing slightly. Just slightly. Pretty much. That's not bad view out the window. We ain't stopping at I don't need to worry about it too much. And up again. We need to put the full thrash in. There we go. Get thrashing some more, you little bastard. So the station was opened by the Dingwall and Sky Railway, but operated by the Highland Railway when it was opened. I don't know what the distinction is. It's all sort of pre nationalisation, so I'm sure there is one, and it's very important, but it all got nationalised in the end and put into the Scottish region, so who cares? Line through the station was opened in 1870. Yo, Achnishalach is another request stop that our service is not booked to stop at. We're less than an hour behind 2883, which is one of the main reasons we don't stop at these stations. What? What 2883 was the one coming the other way? Well, anyway. There's Achna Shalach. Not a lot to really see. I've put the brake on to try and slow the train down. God knows how much speed. I'm going to try and look at the platform. But. Yeah, Achna Shalach. Going down too much, in my opinion. Not a lot there like a lock and there's some station cottages oh. railway cottages very distinctive look I mean those are probably just copied and pasted from elsewhere but anyway Aachen and Shalak 878 passengers 2016-17 in 1892 it was a scene of a runaway train the brake in the brake van malfunctioned. It wasn't a locomotive on the other end, so it fell down the slope at considerable speed, ran up the ran up back uphill and then ran back down that slope. Fortunately it then smacked into a train going the opposite direction at the bottom of the slope with great force. Several injuries. No fatalities, so that's probably not not so bad for an accident at that time. A runaway train smashing into a passenger train. The cause of the accident blamed on the Highland Railway not using continuous braking on the trains, i.e. brakes on each car, the brake wagon at the end, and putting goods wagons at the front of mixed passenger and goods trains. Never be allowed these days, but then there aren't mixed passenger and goods trains anymore. Whoa, case, calm yourself down. Calm your tits down, Mr. Class 37. We are now on the approach to yet another dangerous level crossing at Balnacra. Please ensure you 
You use sound your horn on approach. Okay, I'll, I'll remember to use sound my horn on approach then. Also, I'll brake so I'm not speeding. That would be a good idea as well. It's a good job we're not on career mode, otherwise I've lost all my points by now. We'll give it a good old honking, let them know we're coming. No speed limit, 40 miles per hour with a level crossing, but we're doing 40 miles per hour anyway. Is it, open, is it an open crossing or is it a barrier crossing? It's a barrier crossing or a half barrier crossing. I don't know what the problem is with that. I mean, he says it's dangerous, but no more so than any other level crossing at the, the, the time. And there's the cars being generated from thin air again, popping into existence on the far side of the crossing. A bit of a thrash and a clag, got a bit of an incline to get up. We'll be back up to 40 in no time, I'm sure. Down a little now. A little nudge on the brakes. And a little honk on the horn. Yes, that's promised this is mostly downhill. It's very much more brakes than the throttle at the moment. Slow your tits down. Right, we're going to be about on time into Strathcarry. Probably not ten minutes early like the last bloody station anyway, so that's a positive. That's a positive for a change. Strathcarry on the map there. That's how close we are, we can see it on the mini-map. A live map. 60 down here, we've got 80. I can't quite see. Very clear on the display. Most of my glasses are dirty. Dirty like your mother. Big wide flat valley bases, with rivers meandering along them. Make for spectacular views across to the hills. See why this route is known as Britain's Wall. If not the most scenic, certainly one of the most scenic in the UK. Obviously, by Britain and the UK, I'm taking credit for something in Scotland. I'm English. That's just what we do. You'll have to fucking deal with it. Just how the world works. But if it was a hideous accident that killed millions of people on the line, not that there ever would be a head, it's actually killed millions of people in the line, because there's a million people live in this entire section of Scotland, north of like Glasgow and Edinburgh. Um, then that would be Scotland, Scotland fucking it up. But yeah, like I said, it's not going to happen. There's not even a million people living up here. What a silly man. Exaggerating so thoroughly and excessively. Beautiful, beautiful clag. <laughs> you can choose to believe that the train is powered by midges and... Oh, okay, so you mean. I'm going to say you can choose to believe that the tra train is powered by midges and that's midges instead of clag coming out of it. Maybe that's how midges are created. They get blasted out of class 37. Then the class 37s don't run anymore and there are still midges everywhere, so... 
doesn't seem like a very plausible theory. Here you go, there's an AWS ramp. Ready for it? Here you go, there's your AWS warning. The distant mark of a Strathcarran. It's some very uninterested looking sheep. Speeding again. We get fired as an engine driver doing 41 in a 40 is not acceptable. I don't know if the route guide's going to say much about it, but Strath Karen is basically in the middle of nowhere. But the um, the ridership is a lot higher than the other stations we've passed through, so it's 7,678 for 2016 so a few people. But yeah, it's still no fingers were going down, and I better put the brakes on it for that 15 mile an hour limit rather than reading about Strath Karen. One of the three passing loops. Get through another couple, so I think there's Martin in the last one. Other than at um, Kyle, obviously there's a few tracks there or more. Plenty of time to creep in here at 50 miles an hour. Even though I've braked a little bit prematurely. I'll be late, I don't think. Big farmer's barn. What is there at Strathcarran? Basically, it appears to be a farm. Let's see. It does, in fairness, in Wikipedia say Strathcarran is a small village. Apparently, it consists of a hotel and station, and that's about it. Apparently Strathcarran is also home to indie folk musicians the Ramisco Maki Maki Rocking Horse and Oak Hero. I might have, might have said Ramisco wrong. It might be Ramiso or... But let's just say there aren't very many people here. There isn't a lot here. There's a railway station, there's a hotel, which I assume is just... People like walking holidays and stuff, I can only assume. That's about it. That's about your lot. I'm going to stop on the level crossing now because I don't care. Daddy doesn't care. And there we go. Stopped and the doors are open. We have stopped successfully at Strathgarren Station. There's a river which is to come out of nowhere and I uh, fair enough. There is some sheep. There are a couple of small bungalows. And there is Station Master's House. Station uh, oh there you go, Station Hotel. That's it. There's a station, there's a hotel next to the station, and there's like five houses and a farm. Yeah, seven and a half thousand people apparently used the station last year, so there must be something in it. It must be like walking holidays and stuff. Yeah, good to come and walk around, but never. that's a bit. That's a bit, you know. It. That's a bit, you know, in it. Anyway, nobody's nobody's getting across there because the train's in the way. Aha! There's a fucking barrier for you, you cunts. Have to sit and wait. Mind you, I would buy sitting and waiting looking at the train. Hello, are they goats? I assume. Or are they meant to be sheep with horns? Are they horny sheep or goats? I would, I'm going to say goats. With like, I don't know if that's meant to be like lighting effect or that's a weird baked in texture that's been put on them, but meant to be a lighting effect. I don't know it's the grass and if it's the bloody transparent grass that they're on. That one seems to be inside the grass. Was just in front of the grass, even though it makes it look like he's got disease growing up its base. Here are some logs. All the um, all the constituent parts that you need. Oh, some more houses back here. Look, all the constituent parts you need for a Scottish village. A 
constantly sounding level crossing alarm. Well, we go Strathcarran, Atterdale, Snow Shelter East. Okay, Strome Ferry, Dunkraig, Plockton, Dwirinish, Dwirinish, and Kyle of Lacalche. So it's got another 47 minutes to go based on the timetable. Oh, there we go. We have the token of permission to proceed to Kyle of Lacalche. Lacalche. There's no stopping this train now, baby. No stopping this train now. That's what the that's what the railway's for. It gets shipped in by rail. I'm reminded of the little village in New Zealand by the railway at the other side of the ton big tunnel on the Transalpine where because of the way the valley's laid out during the winter it basically gets no sun it's always in shade or very little sun for like a couple of hours of sun a day and it always rains there as well that seems very Scottish it certainly seems to have like a very depressing live place to live it's extremely cheap to live there because it's basically 100% depression all the time right rev up to Rev up the Clank Meister to 40, or 35 realistically. Is 40 the multiple unit speed, or is it just 35 around the corner? <laughs> yeah, co-op shops definitely don't require civilization. I can testify to that from first-hand experience. They're basically like the most sizely cantina of shops. People come in with shit stuck in and stuck all over their faces and start fights. And get drunk if they're not already drunk. On cheap cider. Not blue milk or green milk or whatever fucking milk he's drinking in the cantina. Or he's not milk, is it? I don't know what he's drinking. Alien dicks. Oh yeah, hover, hover cars. We're in the future here. The secret test bed for hover cars. <laughs> Good spot. <laughs> the old, it's the old community spirit, isn't it? No other fucker will build the shop, so we'll make our own cooperative. If blackjack and hookers, or little bread and whiskey, more likely. I assume we're doing 35 because of these curves around the side of the, um, the loch. And bluff! And bluff! Yeah. That's the thing with co-ops. Um, they have their own little niche. And in that niche, they're unbeatable because no fucker will go there. Other than them. I mean, in a lot of villages now, like Tesco Express is coming in and stuff and undercutting them massively, but the convenience stores in the middle of nowhere that charge huge amounts, but it's the only store for fucking... 10 or 15 miles around, so you, you use it. They can't be beat. It's a, it's a business model. I'll give them that. It's certainly a business model. Yeah. The, the, the future of the company is not in the supermarkets at all. It's in the convenience stores. But I mean, they've continually been closing down superstores um, for years. It's like in like I, I remember, you know, being younger in like the, the 80s where we'd be mum and dad to the co-op supermarket. Like the Midlands. They're all gone now. It's not profitable enough. In a world where Tesco and Asda and everybody else have just come in and murdered them on price. 
Oh yeah, yeah. You you're paying for the the convenience stores are fine. You're paying for the convenience. The supermarkets, you're paying more than your Tesco and your Asda, and it's meant to be a supermarket. So they can only get away with supermarkets now, where there's basically fucking nothing in a nine million mile radius, and people are just forced to go there because there's nothing else. This is Atterdale Station, which, along with most of the other on this section, is a request stop at which we are not booked. But basically, you can get fucked when you're stopping. The mass for the radio signalling. But Atterdale serves the village of Atterdale on Loch Carron in the Highlands. Opened in 1880 by the Dingwall and Sky Railway. Nine hundred and thirty-eight passengers, 2016 to 17. Atterdale was originally going to be the terminus to allow a suitable location to build a pier for steamboats to berth. However, it turned out when they surveyed that the uh, the lock next to Atterdale was too shallow. So they've had to build a ridiculously long and expensive pier. So they extended the line down to Strom Ferry. But they had a deeper section of lock. Steamboats. Meaning the steamers could berth more easily, as Wikipedia puts it. And more closely to the station. So ten years after the railway went through to Strom Ferry, they, they did open the um, did open it anyway. There's a lot of reasons why not. Might as well do it if you built it. Initially, it was just a wooden shelter with a big red flag you used to signal the train to stop. Sounds high tech. You don't even have the flag at request stations now. You just wave your arm at the driver and hope he sees you in time to stop. That's a pretty impressive view. That's the loch. The loch. <laughs> Featured on TV in a Channel 4 documentary, Paul Merton's Secret Stations on the 1st of May 2016. Another one's put on my list to watch. And presenter Paul Merton alighted there en route to visit a salmon breeding farm. I mean, Paul Merton's good, but he's no, you know, Daddy Michael, is he? Like, you know, when he and his lot does train programs, that's all well and good, but he's a little known. This is Atterdale Snow Shelter, a unique structure to protect the line from rock falls as well as avalanches. Is it? Where? Oh, we're about to go under it, okay. Oh yeah, fair enough. It is indeed a snow shelter, and the road passes through it as well. Oh, God. How have you found a... What's that all about? Are you... Is this Margaret Thatcher porn that you're copying and pasting? Someone has pesky one in 50 uphill sections, I'm going to need to put some throttle on. Get some clag going. So there you go, passed under the snow shelter now. Not that unique, I mean, there was a program on uh, Quest, which originally a Discovery program, I assume, a travel channel program, at Mega Railways. Um, they basically have those all the way along the line. It's, Railway that goes through Norway, through Sweden, and then back into Norway again. But then that's up in the mountains, properly up in the mountains, not just like Scottish Highlands, but proper high snowing mountains. <laughs> Where's that Prozzy review from, or is that just a made up Prozzy review? I mean, I assume it's not from the um, it's not from the hotel or something back up the line where we were where we were stopped before. You can sort of see sort of why they've built the line just right along the line of the um, at Loch. 
It's fairly flat. Oh, okay, fair enough. Um, and, yeah, you're not going to get it through the sort of mountainside here. That was all, like, solid rock and granite with the hover car there. Sorry, rock and granite, sorry, solid granite, basically, that they'd have to blast through. Not economically viable to build a tunnel through there for a single line carrying about 20 people a minute. 20 people a minute? 20 people a year. Call it that. Let's say 20 people a year. Back up in again, put a bit of clag on. Marvellous. Passing by. Oh, that's the road. <laughs> I was expecting another loop on the railways for the road. What a fool I've been. Double fork because I'm not breaking down this downhill section. Pre plonk at 25 miles an hour. Got a few there across the across the water. Lock whatever the fuck it is. I lost track again now. Lock a car. There we go. It's, it's only sort of a lock because it actually opens out to the sea eventually. It'll go along the coast here and yes it is sort of enclosed. Um to an extent. Now also it's uh, Come on, get some fucking... Freedom. It'll be because of the, the curving, I would imagine. So, yeah, the line sort of briefly terminated at Strain Ferries, where, as the name potentially suggests, you'd get the ferry um, to the island of Sky or any of the other islands in the inner or outer Hebrides. Just keep her clagging over. Yeah, Not that much Your boat house or something. Who knows what it is? It's it's background scenery from our train passing by. That's all we need. Just some background. Brakes. Speed. Uh, only the like the very beginning of it. Just to have a look at what it looked like at either end. I've not driven it all the way along yet, so this is like the first time I've been down the whole length of it. Hence if I sound surprised at things or don't know what things are, that's why. Because I've done no research as it's traditional for Swery Train Simulator. I just have a few Wikipedia tabs open and hope for the best. And then get distracted reading things out from those Wikipedia articles and we speed or in this case we don't go fast enough because clack vision.
Oh, I'm not paying attention. Hill again. Going up hill again. Promise me all downhill, but I'm having to think and brake and accelerate. It's no good. All going to end in tears. There you go. We're creeping up on Strain Ferry now. It's there on the map. It's there on the. Heads up display, and we're going to get to let rip at 30 miles an hour after we get through Strom Ferry. I'm probably pronouncing Strom Ferry very wrong, Stromer Ferry or something, but I don't care. I mean, I do care because I'm whinging about it, but I don't care. Okay. Ooh, we're down here again, put the brakes on again. It's farted about at 25 miles an hour, eh? It's enough to drive you mad. <sighs> anyway, I was reading before about the class 158 replacing the class 156 on this line because it's quicker. Supposedly. I mean, at what point is it going to be able to use its higher top speed on this line? And the answer is fucking nowhere. The best it can offer maybe is slightly quicker acceleration. That's it. I, uh, I can only assume that there are other benefits to running, like it's cheaper to run, or it's got more seats, or... What knows? But we don't need to worry ourselves with that, because we're in the... Well, it wasn't the original locomotive. Originally, they were run by the Class 26. But these replaced them because they're more powerful than Class 37. Oh, we're not stopping at Strand Ferry. But we were... Just going via. Here it's another tickle of the throttle, why not? There we go, through Strain Ferry Station. There we go, it was once a bustling place with passing loop and yard, which remained in use until 1970. Sadly, it is now nothing but the remote station. At which some trains, like ours, don't even stop. Which is funny because the Wikipedia place page says it's one of the five mandatory calling points. Unless it means it's only mandatory calling points for certain people. For certain trains. But yeah, as you, as you can see, what was once a bustling ferry port. I mean, there's still a slipway and shit, but... Not a bustling ferry port anymore. A station. And a bridge. And that's your lot. So now we're on to the final part of the line, the final section of the line that was opened in 1897. The Kyle of La Calche Extension Highland Railway Line. So the line through to Kyle, or this section of the line, all or nearly all of the line is in cuttings, rock cuttings or embankments. At the time it was the most expensive railway line ever built in Britain per mile. Much money was provided by the government to promote development. The line never gave much traffic, connections with ferries were unreliable, much freight traffic was stolen by the West Highland Railway. That's the one that runs to Malague, I think. 
or is it the one that runs to Stranraer? Anyway, it wasn't very successful. Beeching wanted to cut it, but it was um, social necessity was the reason given for retaining it. Then the ferry service to Lewis was moved from Kyle of Lacalge to Ullapool. Eventually it was saved because it was being used to supply goods for oil platform building at Kitchorn Yard. The section of the line we've just come along along Loch Harren, or this section of the line, is particularly troublesome prone to landslides, often closing this section. There you go. But yeah, not so much at the moment, but you'll see shortly. I have had a quick look down this next section. There's a lot of blasting through um, through rocky rocky terrain, a lot of cuttings through rock. An awful lot of blasting. That's, that's a good crazy scheme actually, moving fishing boats by rail across Scotland to avoid them having to sail around the country if they wanted to move around the country. That's a good crazy scheme. Never came to fruition but it's a good, good scheme, nonetheless. Um, just a quick note on Strom Ferry, uh, 1,254 the ridership. But that's it, we don't have to worry about Strom Ferry anymore. Next station along the line is Duncraig. Before we even get there, we've got another two and a half miles of twisty turny, 30 miles per hour, nice scenery to go through. That's nice, isn't it? That's nice, isn't it? Isn't it, mate? So this this will be your, your section with the issues with landslides and shit. The great big sheer cliff faces and that and that to use a technical term. Check in. Oh now we've got a shit view of a rock face. Now we need to move to the other side of the train to get a proper view. Scenery. I do. There's not that much of a view of the scenery either at the moment. There we go. Oh, oh. Look at that. There's some water and some hills by the by the water. I now have a scenery erection. Big granite hard boner for the scenery. You can actually see just on the map, let's go into the bottom right hand corner now, Kyle of Lockalsh Station, or Kyle of Lockalsh, the, the entire place. Um, we're going to continue basically going around the shore of Loch Carron. And you see plopped in there and then we move around the shore a bit more. But it's the easiest place to put a railway through this terrain. It is 22.55 and we are still going and we're not even there yet. There's another uh, 20 minutes or so to go. Well, according to the timetable it might be 10 minutes for all I fucking know. So here you go, you're beginning to see now why there was a lot of... Um, Blasting involved through these blasts, sort of a railway line through this, these cuttings. That are, it's just solid rock, it's not digging out soil, it's rock cuttings. As I say, this, is the, this was at the time the most expensive railway per mile build in Britain.
Chinny probably just assumed that it was over. But this, this is this is a, a longer run than usual. But I did post a warning that it was going to be a longer run than usual. Of sorts. Well worth taking the time to enjoy it. A nice class 37 instead of a chitty class 158 DMU, which was the other option for the track. I did have a quick look, but it's just not the same through these like little letterbox from driver's window. Hanging out the side of a 37 is the way to go. Plagging along. This next station has an amusing fact. Adam Craig. Dynamite all the way. People blowing arms and legs off probably as well. The Dun Craig um, used to be a privately owned station. And it was serving Dun Craig Castle, which wasn't really a castle, it was a mansion near Plockton. Apparently it has a unique little octagonal waiting room, which we shall see if it's been lovingly modelled in about two seconds. Two seconds, in about a minute, when we come round the curve and see it. The station was built in 1897 and opened with the rest of the line when that opened. The station is Category B listed building. I'm just going to wait and see if this route guide thing mentions the, the factoid, if I'm going to have to mention it. Right, keep breathing, and all these low bridges. Where's the octagonal waiting room? Oh, Duncraig rarely sees passengers. It's one of the quietest stations in Britain. 348 passengers, 2017 to 6. 2016 to 17. Virtually serves just the castle high above the line. The line now climbs sharply to Plockton, so be prepared. Where's the octagonal waiting room? I've been, I've been out. Oh, no, there it is. Okay, look, I know it is paper. Go back and look. There you go. There's a unique little octagonal waiting room. <laughs> Can we see the mansion stroke castle high on the hillside? Probably not. That would involve effort. Ooh, who's that meant to be? Well, there we go. One can only assume that that is Dunkraig Castle. Meands its way through. There's the station. Walk up the road. Up oh, the road. Castle. Castle. Which isn't really a castle. It's what some fucking rich Victorian twats probably built. Um, there you go. The fun fact about Dunkraig Station. Um, it was closed on the 7th of December 1964. It was reopened on the 5th of January 1976. The reason it was reopened was that all the train drivers refused to acknowledge the fact that it had been closed for those 11 years, but they would still stop at the station, which is quite entertaining, <laughs> to say the least. Like, no, you're not closing the station, fuck off, we're still going to stop there. It did tell me to be ready for that incline, and I'm too busy laughing that the militant train drivers are still stopping at Dungrain Station, even though they've been told it's closed. If the platform's still there and people are still using it, then fucking why not? Entertaining little piece of history. Probably not even true, but you never know. get some more clag. Need to clag up the hill through the canyon towards Plockton. We're we stopping at Plockton. We are stopping at Plockton. I need to get there a bit quicker than I am getting there, I think. 
Oh man, I'm not that far off actually. Mm. A nice miasma of clag through the valley. It's ent entertaining that um, a station that was built as a private station for the owner of the castle, the owner of the mansion, was kept open by militant, militant, dirty communist train driving bastards. I bet they were all union members as well at the time. I mean, 1960s and 70s, of course they are. Here we go into Plockton. Doming the village of Plockton, funnily enough. Who would have thought that? Ridership 9,998. So actually a massive bustling metropolis compared to most of the other things uh, on the line. Platform's not very long, so I'll have to let the loco pull in through and then put the brakes on. No, come on, stop. Don't have the coaches hanging off the end of the line. Ah, bollocks. Come on, you couldn't stop. That should be enough braking for anyone. We're here! Hurrah! And we're like still two or three minutes early. What's slack time built into this timetable? It's very generous. I think this is just what I was saying before about train simulator timetabling, though. It's, it's using the built in timings, so though. There's always going to be loads of slack. There you go, it's Plockton Station. We pronounce Plockton! Or something. I'm, I'm not sure what these giant buildings are next to it. Maybe that's that's to do with the oil rig manufacturing or factory or offices or who knows what that is. I could probably look it up. Mm, no. Uh, the station building was occupied by a restaurant named Off the Rails. However, it's now no longer in business. Now a privately owned self-catering holiday cottage. There you go. You can go and have a self-catering holiday at the station building. And right now I might go and Google that later in the book. <laughs> well, I don't know where you get the food from. You probably have to drive to 200 miles. We probably have to drive to Kyle if look out the nearest shop. Um. Lockton Village itself is again sort of kind of near the water. Population 378. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's. The um, thing is, it's all 158s, isn't it? Maybe the odd steam train during the summer on the charter, which probably booked up and really expensive in the summer. Oh, here you go. Here's a Plockton fact for you. Uh, Hamish Macbeth was filmed here. Any of you remember Hamish Macbeth? About a policeman in the Highlands, played by Begbie, so I mean Robert Carlyle. But it was not that long after he'd been doing Begbie. Final stop, Kyle, 1408. Plockton is well known as one of the most beautiful villages in Britain. You may well have noticed it if it weren't for the trees as we climbed up from Dunkraig. Yeah, you lazy cunt, you've not fucking modelled it, have you? Off we go. I just wanted to draw attention to this man and his stuffed dog who appears to have teleported to outside the bunkhouse. Watch the train come in and go by and there's his ginger wife. Or just a, a random ginger woman and he's timing us again. Might have been Monica for Glenn. Plockton was also used for various scenes in the film Wicker Man. And the Inspector Allen Mysteries series. <laughs> Nearby is... Okay, Duncraig Castle was built by the Matheson family who made their money in the opium trade. I, I should really be breaking down the hill rather than laughing at the fact that that was built with opium trade money. So there you go, Duncray Castle was built with opium money, of course it was. So there's your, there's your local heroin supply essentially. 
Not quite, but close enough. Still, still a little village in the middle of nowhere, though. However many delusions of grandeur the Wikipedia article has about its importance in the world. It's all getting a bit uphill again. It's all getting a bit uphill again. Oh, no. It's not that uphill, not that downhill yet. Come on, give it a thrash. Let's go. Be tight through this. Breathe in. They've definitely blasted out the amount required and no more. Whoa there. Calm yourself down. Calm your tits. Come on, brakes. Oh god, it's downhill. That's why it's not like braking. Slow down. There you go. Dwearinish. 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 Don't know how you pronounce it. Again, research doesn't happen. It's basically a platform, a little shed. There you go. Another request stop on our journey. It sees very little in the way of passenger usage. That's because there's fuck all there for people to go to. 930 passengers last time that they measured it. 2016-17. Um, it's near the settlement. And they're using the word settlement. So you know basically it's three fucking houses. Of Dwyrinish in the Highlands of Northern Scotland. It's even got a population figure on Wikipedia. It doesn't even merit that. Like I say, it's like it's going to be like three fucking houses, isn't it? Only it's half a mile away, so that's never going to be modelled in the bloody station and in the bloody train simulator, is it? A little bit downhill. A little bit downhill towards this bridge, and then a little bit uphill. A little bit of a tweak of a throttle. We're getting there now. Might even be there on time if we're really lucky. This ETA is 14.08, so there's not a lot of slack time. Uh, it's the Carl of Lacalche line, Dave, between uh, Inverness and Carl of Lacalche. Lacalche, however it's pronounced. across Loch Heron. The embankment up on the side. A steep bit. Gradient, giving a bit of a clag. Ah, she blows. And I'm not talking about my penis. Although, that is quite erotic. Not my penis, the train. Until the early 1970s, the Carla Flakalsh station provided a connection to ferries to the Outer Hebrides. 71 miles away from Stornoway, Carla Flakalsh. Crossing Cromarty Council created a new ferry terminal at Ullapool, as previously intimated. It's only 43 miles from Stornoway. A bit more convenient for the Outer Hebrides and Carla Flakalsh, so the whole ferry thing just sort of went down the toilet.
There also used to be ferries across the Isle of Skye, but in 1995 the Skye Bridge was opened and the ferries were no longer needed. I think we can see the Sky Bridge from Isle of Luck Alsh when we get in there. But given, given the game away now, it's still two, two and three quarter miles away yet. It's slowly making our way down the hillside. Down to the coast. The bridge. I just end up derailing. It'd be faster in a in a 158 or a 156 because there are fewer speed limits for those, or there's fewer like speed limitations over bridges and stuff, so you could probably get the speed up a little bit more. But it's still going to be about three hours, just because of the length of the line and the speed limit, or well, not the length of the line, but the speed limitation. Especially as you get up to this end, when it's 20 or 30 for a lot of the lot of the route. There you go. Some more embankment work. I would have cost a few quid to stick an embankment in there across the. Water it a little inlet. Boat there. Boat there for going boating on the boating. Sheep. You do expect them to put swans in really. Lazy bastards. He said after driving along a three hour train route that they've lovingly modelled. Again, some more factoids about the um, about the railway route. Twenty thousand pounds per mile, and that's twenty thousand pounds per mile in eighteen nineties money, eighteen eighties, eighteen nineties money. That is a lot of money these days. A mile of railway probably still going to work out cheaper than high speed two or something stupid like that. You know. They didn't have health and safety back in them days, so it was cheaper. Ooh. That was a bit of a wobble. That was a bit of a wibbity wobble. Don't be derailing on me now, you prick, near the end. That'd be about right. That'd be about par for the course. Failing to finish. Right next to the end. Fifteen mile per hour speed limit coming up because we don't want to end up launching off the um, the end of the harbour and into the lock or the sound or whatever it is, inner sound. There's the inner Hebrides here. Surrounding the, uh, the uh, area. See that on the map? No, I don't see it at all on the map. <laughs> Somewhat obscured by the fact that it's all rock and embankment all the way through and cutting. Looks like we might be on time after all into car.
Nice clag. Mmm, lovely clag. Go down for this 50 mile an hour restriction. platform one a third of a mile away should you know, is, is the bridge at the station as we come round this corner is there if I stick my head outside the sticky head outside view <laughs> I it would be absolutely par for the course if the game crashed now but I ain't doing it again <laughs> <laughs> this is your lot. If you don't get to see Carlos like Carlos, I'll just start a scenario at Carlos and then show you it. Here's the old car signal box closed when he went to a radio electric token block and he's now a holiday cottage apparently. There's a lot of cottaging around these parts. A lot of cottaging. And here we go, here's the station platform. There's also sort of good sidings and so on for stashing trains and whatever else. The stations next to piers that used to offer sailing to the sky. Here they are. They used to hop off the train and hop on a ferry. As my logo hole, I should really stop well short of these points. station and stopped and the doors are open let's just have a quick squeeze around I said and the doors are open and the doors are opened to stop pick up passengers oh I see we miss are we They're going to be a prick about it. There you go, you wanted it to fuck up. Well, you've got your wish. There we go. The doors are open. Well, there's Carl of Lacalle. They don't seem to have put the bridge in. Well. Got it, mate. Maybe it's, maybe it's inverted commas before the bridge. Allegedly. But like the, you can see from the um, map, the road sort of comes around and then goes across the island of Sky. Yeah, oh, we can't see the bridge. Or it's before the bridge was built. But yeah, there is a honking great bridge there now, so the ferries aren't needed anymore. Not convinced about the container. Oh, look, forklift. Maybe there's going to be a race. Wow. Wow. Look at that. Picking up boxes. Wait, he's not. He's spawning a box on the end of his thing. And, like, dropping his other thing. And, wow. Okay, well. There you go. Oh, no, there's the bridge. It's the great big twatting bridge across the, um, across the sound to the island. No wonder I couldn't see the bridge. It's I'm looking at the wrong place. <laughs> there we go. I I've unfairly maligned them. It's the other end of the village, the place I was um ring. Ring. Yeah. So there we are, Carl of Lacage Station. Three hours of hot train action. Well more than three hours, from like three hours twenty minutes. Three hours fifteen minutes. <laughs> The spad thing is because it's RETB, so just don't worry too much about that, because if it was a proper spad, it would have stopped the game. So, 7 out of 7 targets complete, speeding 28 times. Yeah, well, we saw that, didn't we? 92 miles covered total from, uh, from Inverness. 
to Dingwall and then the 60 odd miles to Cardiff Lacarche from Nickwall. 3 hours 17 minutes 52 seconds. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, for joining me for that extensive and somewhat lengthy sweary train simulator. Um, next week, I'm sure you'll, it'll be shorter. Well, it might not be shorter. I mean, it might might be just as long. Who knows? But thank you very much for joining me, whether you join me at the start or the end, and I will see you sooner or later for more of the same train-based bullshit. Thank you, good night, and have a good rest of your weekend. Bye.